Still enjoying her leisure time while sipping her coffee in the cafe, Huayu was suddenly overwhelmed by a powerful aura nearby. Glancing outside through the window, she saw it was Zhuang Kui sitting inside a black car, and from the look of it, it seemed to be heading toward Lu Sheng's home. She then stood up abruptly, causing the other customers to turn their gazes towards her. Through the window, several people fully covered up in all black were trailing behind the car. Clearly, Zhuang Kui didn't come alone, and Ji Dao also sent their shadows over to assist him. Looks like things were getting a bit more complicated. Although Huayu knew these shadows were only artificially elevated to the seventh level through the Martial Saint's secret techniques and couldn't really be called Grandmasters, their terror lay in the battle formation the Ji Dao Martial Saint had personally crafted for them. It was said that it only takes 24 shadows to potentially take down an eighth level Great Grandmaster. With this troubling thought, Huayu pressed on her headset, hastily dialed her communicator, then drew her sword from her back and charged. In an instant, she cut down one of the shadows, causing the two in front to suddenly stop. What followed was more of them appeared from all directions. She quickly counted. There were twelve in total, including the one she just killed. The call finally connected, and the person on the other end was surprised to hear that Ji Dao had sent not only Zhuang Kui, but also twelve shadows. Watching Zhuang Kui's car driving away, Hua Yu knew she could not afford to waste any more time. In the next scene, a black car pulled up at the Lu family's front gate. Zhuang Kui stepped out, a cold, murderous aura enveloping him as he flashed a cruel smile. Huayu arrived just in time, clutching her abdomen, not sure if she was wounded. She wasn't able to get rid of all of the shadows, but was relieved she had made it on time, however. Her eyes widened at the sight of something, and she gulped hard, muttering, Oh no, this is bad. On the other end of the line, the person becomes anxious, and asks her what is wrong. In a stern tone, Huayu tells the person word by word that Zhuang Kui has reached the eighth level. Today's evening was quieter than usual, and under the glow of street lamps, his grandmaster aura was almost palpable. He gazed at the Lu family's gate, not in a hurry to enter, feeling the cool evening air whisk across his face. He felt a deep sense of joy, perhaps talking to himself, reminiscing about his twenty years following the Ji Dao Martial Saint. Being one of the 28 stars, he had been stuck at the peak of the seventh level for so long. Gently rolling up his sleeves, he raised his hands excitedly. He had waited many years for this moment, and now it had finally arrived. He clasped his hands together, and within him, his blood energy converged, almost as if it formed an invisible bridge connecting him to the heavens and the earth. With every breath, he could feel his strength growing by the second. It wasn't long until he felt his grandmaster's aura was almost at its peak, spreading outward in waves tinged with a sinister red and black hue. He lifted one hand, letting the street lamp's light filter through his fingers, as if he could grasp the light itself. Immersed in this sensation, he wondered aloud, so this is what the eighth level felt like. The dude is acting like he's having an orgasm for the first time, immediately after he returns to calmness. Suddenly, a beam of light appeared in his hand grasping it tightly, his face showing a mix of excitement and murderous intent as he gazed into the distance. Perhaps he needed to thank Lu Sheng. If it wasn't for him to kill Lian Jibei and his son, making Lian Su go crazy for revenge, he would never have obtained the Ji Dao secret scroll, let alone broken through to the eighth level. As he walked slowly into the entrance, he recalled hearing that Lu Sheng was actually a teenage grandmaster, with even Marshal Saint Tan Zhongyue himself sending people to protect him. But none of this mattered to Zhuang Kui. At this moment, he was not only indulged by his growing power, but also thrilled at the prospect of killing such a promising young prodigy. Just then, Zhuang Kui heard footsteps ahead. He looked up to see a young man with his hands in his pockets, calmly asking if he was sent by the Lian family. Zhuang Kui did not respond to him. Instead, he ordered the shadows behind him to go ahead, reminding them that Lady Lian Su wanted to see their heads. Clearly, he was referring to Lu Sheng's family. The shadows, upon receiving the order, rushed into Lu Sheng's mansion at full speed, appearing behind the both of them in an instant. Zhuang Kui, exhilarated, walked step by step towards Lu Sheng. Just as he thrust forward, Lu Sheng's figure vanished, reappearing in front of the shadows. The two shadows in the very front were momentarily stunned. In that instant, Lu Sheng raised his hand and slapped at the shadow's head causing it to promptly roll several meters, eventually landing at the feet of another shadow. 
Witnessing this, the remaining shadows halted in their tracks. Lu Sheng looked at the blood on his hand, disappointed at how weak these supposed grandmasters were. Apart from their strong blood energy level, their grandmaster aura was as fragile as paper to him. In his eyes, they were nothing but pure garbage. Zhuang Kui snapped his fingers, laughing as he approached Lu Sheng. Lu Sheng's speed truly surprised him. He even remarked that under different circumstances, he would have liked to get to know him better, perhaps even become friends. Without hesitation, Lu Sheng tells him, there is no chance of that ever happening. Reaching behind his neck, he stared at Zhuang Kui as if looking at a dead man, suddenly a powerful aura emanating from him, followed up by him saying he never makes friends with a corpse. Hearing this, Zhuang Kui smirked, taking a step forward. His powerful aura shattered the stone bricks beneath him. He disdainfully looked at Lu Sheng, mocking him for being a mere novice grandmaster and yet daring to speak so arrogantly. Zhuang Kui drove his weapon into the ground, releasing an even stronger aura. A circle formed beneath his feet, and in a low, resonant voice, he said aloud that he was an eighth-level great grandmaster. With each word, his aura expanded further, breaking nearby trees and uprooting street lamps. His blood energy surged as he couldn't wait to show Lu Sheng what it truly meant to be an eighth level. However, Lu Sheng was as composed as ever. The surroundings went silent as all they heard was Lu Sheng began counting, starting at one. With that, a purple light flashed in his eyes as a wheel inside his body began to spin, landing at the martial god state. The shadows around him suddenly found their bodies immobilized, and from Lu Sheng, a blinding light radiated outwards. It was so bright that it forced the shadows to close their eyes. Then came the second number, two. The shadows' bodies began to expand, and in an instant, their body exploded simultaneously. Blood, limbs, and shattered remains hovered momentarily in the air before falling to the ground. Zhuang Kui, drenched in cold sweat, instinctively took a small step back. He couldn't believe what the hell just happened. Lu Sheng kept counting, now at three. At that moment, his aura seemed to transform into that of a demon lord from the abyss. Zhuang Kui, drenched in cold sweat, finally realized just how terrifying this young man was. Panic set in, and he began to stumble on his feet, trembling all over. He kept breathing, trying to calm himself, repeatedly reminding himself that he was an eighth level. But before he could finish his thought, Lu Sheng appeared before him. In the next second, Lu Sheng's hand came in contact with his chest. Zhuang Kui's gaze followed, only to hear the number four. Lu Sheng's remained emotionless as he uttered the final number. Perhaps knew just how badly he messed up. Zhuang Kui screamed, Impossible! In the next instant, there was a massive explosion. When the light and smoke dissipated, there was a massive hole in his chest. Oddly, no blood poured out. What's even more strange was that his body stood perfectly still. He gazed down in utter disbelief, his mind unable to fathom the cruel reality. Twenty years it took him to this moment, only to be effortlessly defeated. He suddenly knelt down, staring at his hands as his body began to dissolve. Before disappearing completely, his final words were, I am a great, grand, master. Lu Sheng walked past him slowly, wondering so. This is the eighth level. He glanced at the spot where Zhuang Kui had vanished and murmured, You may be an eighth level, but I am the martial god. Moments later, the place returned to its serene state. Not long after, a mother and her daughter walked by. The little girl was hopping along and seemed to be in a great mood, but she suddenly stopped staring curiously at a person ahead. She tugged at her mother's hand and pointed at a girl standing under a street lamp looking dazed, telling her mommy, that big sister looks just like the silly people on TV. As the mother and daughter walked away, Huayu kept standing there, just as the little girl described, staring vacantly towards the distance. You might think she is totally rizzed up by our boy, but that's not really the case. More precisely, she was more terrified. She is still trying to process what she has just witnessed. Was it all a dream? Had this young man really butchered them like animals? And this is the Lu Sheng they all talked about? On the other hand, Lu Sheng glanced at the severed hand on the ground, reflecting on the strange encounter. The great grandmaster he had just fought felt oddly insubstantial, not even half as strong as great grandmaster Jiang. It dawned on him that this guy must have used some unorthodox method to artificially boost his strength. Nevertheless, Lu Sheng gained a deeper understanding of his own power. 
Although he had never faced the very top 8th level, he felt confident in his ability to crush ordinary 8th level. Since the attack just now wasn't even his full strength, it was more of an experiment, an attempt to infuse his psychic power into a strike while in his martial god state. The resulting power had surprised him. What would happen if he combined it with other techniques? His gaze swept across the street and settled on a girl standing under a street lamp, who had been there for a while. Lu Sheng realized she must have been watching the entire time, likely intending to help. Although the enemies were dealt with, she could help him out in some way. Meanwhile, Huayu continued to stand there, completely stunned. Just like turning on an old 20-year-old Windows XP system, it took her a while to wake up. She wasn't sure how much time had passed when the urgent voice in her headset broke her reverie, asking repeatedly what was going on. Hurriedly, she responded. Upon receiving her reply, the person on the other end sighed in relief, and then asked if she had reached Lu Sheng's house and how things were. Hua Yu hesitated for a moment, then described the situation in one word, disastrous. The person on the other end was silent for a moment before sighing and consoling her, saying it couldn't be helped since the opponent was an eighth level. They then instructed Hua Yu to help bury Lu Sheng and his family. It was clear that whoever is on the other side had misunderstood. She didn't know how to explain the scene before her. The bodies on the ground, none of them were in completely one piece, and that was barely recognizable as human and Zhuang Kui, who hadn't even left a corpse behind. She told the person that she meant it was disastrous for Ji Dao, recounting how Lu Sheng had butchered them all in just four breaths. The person on the other end fell silent. Suddenly, Hua Yu looked up. Her eyes widened. It seemed Lu Sheng was looking at her and trying to say something. She carefully read Lu Sheng's lips, then followed his finger to where he was pointing. It seemed he was asking her to take care of the area and then help clean up the mess. At the Seventh Divine Martial University, Zhao hung up the phone, barely able to believe what he had just heard. Meanwhile, Tan Marshal Saint was gazing out the window, having overheard the conversation between Hua Yu and Zhao. His eyes looked distant, as if he were in deep contemplation. Stroking his beard with a hint of a smile, he remarked, Lu Sheng, you are becoming more interesting by the day. Three days passed quickly, and during this time, no one came to disturb Lu Sheng. Unexpectedly, his phone rang, and it was Zhao. It turned out Zhao wanted to relay the message from Tan Marshal Saint that Ji Dao Marshal School would no longer be troubling him. Lu Sheng was a bit surprised and asked if it was the Marshal Saint who had intervened. Zhao didn't know the details either, but based on his understanding of the Marshal Saint, having someone sent to help was already the most they could expect. The two continued to talk over the phone about Lu Sheng's diploma and other matters related to graduation. Zhao expressed his hope that Lu Sheng would go to the Capital Martial Art Association to get his Grandmaster status certified, as it was a prestigious honor. Lu Sheng wasn't particularly interested in this at the moment, and didn't have plans to return to the capital anytime soon. He replied that he would take care of it when the opportunity arose. Zhao didn't press the issue, and their conversation soon ended. Only then did Lu Sheng realize that the girl from a few days ago wasn't a cleaner, nor sent by Zhao. She was actually from the faction under Tan Marshal Saint's command. What surprised him the most was that the Ji Dao Marshal School seemed to let everything go. Considering an eighth level was killed, he expected a more intense retaliation. But if what Zhao said was true, it was for the best, since he hated trouble. Not long after, General Yu called. Upon answering, Lu Sheng discovered it was actually General Yu who had mediated the situation. The military had stepped in to negotiate with the Ji Dao Marshal School, wanting to protect Lu Sheng. The general expressed both relief and surprise that Lu Sheng had managed to take down so many grandmasters, including a great grandmaster. With a hearty laugh, he joked about a time when he had patted Lu Sheng on the back pretty hard, telling him not to hold a grudge. Lu Sheng didn't expect news to reach the military so quickly. The general's laughter echoed, explaining that no information could be kept from the military's ears. Transitioning to a serious tone, Lu Sheng mentioned that Zhuang Kui and the Shadows had likely used some forbidden technique to artificially boost their blood energy level, making them not as strong as they seemed. He also acknowledged that the military must have paid a significant price to force the compromise. The general's laughter ceased, his expression turning somber. After a brief silence, he assured Lu Sheng that although they had made some concessions, it wasn't as much as he might think and there was no need for Lu Sheng to feel any burden on his back. He then revealed that their nation had a total of three martial saints, 
but none were from the military. Lu Sheng understood what the general was trying to say. The implication was pretty clear. The military was in desperate need of a martial saint to bolster its ranks. Lu Sheng, in a rare moment of levity, joked, telling the general to rest assured, telling him when he becomes a martial saint, he will make sure to promote him. The general on the other end of the line choked and coughed violently, not expecting this from Lu Sheng. They exchanged a few more words before ending the call. Lu Sheng smiled. He had prepared for the worst, but the outcome had been unexpectedly favorable. It seems like he was truly accepted by the military. This was great since he had already decided to head to the front lines. The words of an old poem echoed in his mind. Perhaps fighting on the front lines was, to him, the epitome of a man's romance. Then, Lu Sheng remembered a scroll that had fallen from Zhuang Kui a few days ago. At the time, he hadn't paid it much attention and had hurried home for dinner, tossing it aside. Now he picked it up and read the first line before throwing it into the trash. These types of techniques in the dream realm were countless times stronger than anything on that scroll. He then began to meditate, closing his eyes and entering the dream realm. Since returning home, his mind had been constantly tense, and it had been a while since he last visited this place. Standing at the intersection of several streets, he took in the familiar, dilapidated buildings. Even the sight of the wandering zombies felt oddly comforting. He waved at them, jokingly telling them there wouldn't be fighting and they could all rest for the day. Whether they could understand him or not, he quickly sprinted away. From the look of it, it seems that at least one of the zombies certainly looks happy. Just look at his bright smile. Even zombies still enjoy an occasional day off. He then entered a building and summoned Ai Yi once more, asking her to check his personal profile. This time, he noticed significant changes. The photo showed an older version of himself with a scar over one eye. This time, he had lived for a full 360 years, reaching the level of a super ninth level martial saint. The description praised his extraordinary talent. His earlier experiences remained the same, but recent events were meticulously recorded. He had joined the Eastern Military District this year and had been promoted to an eighth level great grandmaster at the age of 25. At age 40, he ascended to the ninth level martial saint. At age 50, he killed Zhao Ji, aka the Ji Dao martial saint. That same year, he fought and defeated Marshal Saint Tan Zhong Yu and the Transcendent Marshal Saint. By age 60, he had traveled to all nations around the world and defeated all the world's ninth level martial artists, and he was named the strongest under the heavens. Lu Sheng was hailed as one of the top 10 outstanding martial saints of the past 3,000 years, making significant contributions to the exploration of the 10th level path. Although initially puzzled by the term Super Ninth Level, Lu Sheng soon understood what it actually meant. It referred to a level stronger than the ninth level martial saint. Yet because the path to the tenth level hadn't been fully established, people likely believed the ninth level was the pinnacle. According to history, the tenth level wasn't unlocked until 3,000 years after Lu Sheng's passing. However, in this life, Lu Sheng silently vows that he will be the one to blaze the trail and open the path to the tenth level. Once that happened, he could bring all of the techniques from his dream realm into reality without worrying about the safety of his family and friends. Then whether he did this or not, once the path was created, he believed that countless martial arts prodigies would forge ahead, their inspirations colliding to create even more astounding techniques. Regardless, everything was moving in a positive direction. As for killing the Ji Dao martial part, it didn't surprise him, since it was all expected. At that moment, his access level within the Fire Seed project was elevated by another star, allowing him to unlock more advanced techniques. Seeing this, Lu Sheng was thrilled. Excitedly, he instructed Ai Yi to query the subsequent techniques for stellar body technique, natural breathing technique, and crystal meditation technique. Well, it seems our boy forgot to check the list of wives today. Let's not forget to remind him next time anyway. This brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, and once again, special thanks to the channel members and recent Super Chats. As always, see you all in the next one.